I have to say I'm conflicted uh, doing this interview because Hussein knows that I have been a jawbone wearer. I wear it on my right wrist uh, for, when did you start coming out with these bracelets? Uh, 2012. 2012. 2012. So 2012. I, 2012. I had the, the first one, which didn't work so well. That's right. That was 2011. Um, <laughs> but I monitor my sleep and my uh, walking and my running or not or lack of running and all of these things. And so I am selfishly thrilled that you are here today you. Uh, to talk about the implications of what this whole world really is and what, what it's all about. I don't think about. anybody's heard of wearables before. You don't, they don't think they know what we're talking about? Who, who's heard of wearables here? No, come on. No, I'm just kidding. So, Let's start with this. You have uh, a new bra you have many bracelets. Is that that's bracelets. a fashion is that how much this of that is, is fashion and what which one's you fashion? You have young children, but they're not old enough, but I have young children who give me these things, so I sort of right. celebrate them. Um, so for those there's a lot of people out here who don't wear these things yet. Um, and they uh, I get a lot of people who think I'm crazy for wearing the bracelet and they say, What do you need to know all this information? Is that an East for? Coast, West Coast? I don't know. I get it on all sides. And they say, well, if, don't you know if you wake up in the morning, you're tired, and you didn't get that much sleep? What do you need to look at the, the iPhone to tell you this for? Um, how much of the, I mean, how big a market do you think there really is for this stuff? And what kind of resistance do you get? Do you, do you get a lot of people who say, I know if I ran a mile today or not? Yeah, it's big. It's really big. I mean, we, we've been around for a little bit. It's sort of done different categories. Um, this is by far the fastest growing one and I think the largest, because I think we've sort of tapped into something pretty fundamental with people, which is I haven't met anybody who doesn't want to be better. I don't care if you are a business professional or a professional athlete or a housewife. It's sort of a fundamental human truth, right? Every single person wants to be better incrementally against their baseline. I think these are sort of tools that help you do that. And yes, after a while, you figure out a good day is X, a bad day is Y. Sleep is a whole different thing. It's sort of this right. complete unknown new adventure, and I think people are starting to understand, like, hey, what are the things that I do that affect those things, like how much deep sleep I get or how rested how, I am? Tell us a story. Right. How did you land here? And the reason I, I ask is when uh, most of us, I think, originally became familiar with Jawbone because of the, bl the Bluetooth headsets that were which attached is a to the wearable. Phone, which is a wearable right. of sorts. Of sorts. I didn't think about, about it that way at the time. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. So the sensor technology that we used in those headsets is actually the foundation of what we're doing in these devices. And so we were using that for communications purposes to understand what people were talking, not talking, and we realized these sensors do a lot of other things um, that could be interesting to users. So we said, you know, this is sort of circa 2009. We started to think about, could we take that same technology base and take all the learning that we had around how to make really small devices that were comfortable, highly designed, you know, medical grade plastic, all that sort of stuff, and apply it to this other space around health and wellness, and would this be a killer app on your body, right? Because killer apps have, at one point, were telling time, kind of corrective eyewear, clothing, right? Communications, consumption. Could, could health and fitness be a killer app? And so that was the thinking in 2009. I think it's, it's working. So walk us through the future. How, how much are we gonna be able to know soon about ourselves, and what are we learning, and what are you learning about a lot, us? A lot, a lot, uh, Well, I mean, you, what we're trying to do is take all of that information set. So very soon you're gonna know a lot about yourself. And what we think of ultimately the role of wearables in your life is gonna be is sort of this 24 seven, what we call context engine. Because my phone is not on me, it's on the charger, right? Um, and it's a piece of technology that's on you all the time. The role of it in your life should be to understand everything that you're doing and almost get ahead of you. It should be powering that smart world around you, right? Everyone talks about the Internet of Things. We think wearables are sort of that control point right in the center. I'll give you an example. Yeah. So no matter how smart your thermostat is, it has no idea if you're hot or cold. I can tell that device you're hot because you're sick, you went for a run, it's hot outside, you're stressed out, each of which should trigger a different response. I can tell your car you didn't sleep well last night or you're falling asleep or you're agitated, right? Each of which, again, should trigger different responses. So it's taking all of this technology and all of this computing power that's distributed in all these sensors, and it's giving meaning to that. And that's ultimately where we see it so going. So it's less about me knowing that I didn't get a great sleep last night because I didn't get too much deep well, sleep. Well, it is about that because I can then tell you, hey, you know what? You're going to crave carbs today, right? You're, you're absolutely, so stay away from them. Just be aware of that. You had this type of sleep stay on this track and I can keep reminding you. So it becomes this sort of intelligent, personal 
helper, assistant, that but it, but it sounds that's not like, nagging, but it's sort of helping you through that. And that's what we want to do with the data. But it sounds like the you. future is not so much necessarily just about my own behavior. It's about connecting these devices to all other. It's both. To other pieces of the world. It's both. You'll use it because it's bringing value to you. And then you'll be excited that it's doing more than that, right? It's sort of in front of you. Because understanding those things that are relevant to you should also be relevant to the things around you. So this device, you're wearing uh, the UP3. This is the UP3. Yeah. This is not available for sale yet. It's I, available for it's pre order. It's pre order. Because yes. I've been to the website and I've been <laughs> waiting for this thing to come out. And um, first of all, when's it going to be? Can I ask? Soon. You? Soon. Very you soon. Can, you can't say. <laughs> Super Christmas soon. is coming. This is like a good soon. stocking stuff. It is a good. Expensive stocking stuffer, but. It could but, just be a present. Could be a present. It doesn't have to be a um, stocking stuffer. <laughs> what what um, was just small? That's what I was thinking. Oh, tell, tell, what does this do? What is this tracking? Yeah, so this is, for us, I mean, the transition between the device that you've been wearing and this one, we think of it almost like going from a feature phone to a smartphone. That's, you know, basic sensors tracking activity and sleep. Here we have full multi-sensor. We're tracking your heart rate, all kinds of aspects around that. Your resting heart rate when you wake up, what happens during the day, what happens with stress, hydration. Um, the, the platform allows us to do all kinds of hydration. How would it know? How, how would it know how much based water on I'm the, drinking? Based on the changes in your physiology, because it's measuring bioimpedance. So we, through the electrical signals in your, we measure through the tissue. We're able to tell all these things about what's happening with your physiology. So we're able to tell your body temperature, what's happening with your skin galvanization, all kinds of stuff. It's pretty powerful. And so we're able to put all of that in a really, really small, power efficient package. And with power efficient, how often, you gotta you got keep this on, uh, I wear mine, I'll wear, am I, am I supposed to wear it in the shower? You can. Okay, I do, yeah. so I, um, <laughs> uh, is, is this, uh, how often do you have to recharge this? This will be about, you know, depending on your use case and, and how much you um, work out and things like that, um, it'll be sort of in the four to seven day range. Okay, now the reason I ask is because I wanna ask you about the Apple phone, I mean, I'm sorry, the Apple watch, which we don't know, what, well, we've seen it, but we don't know when that's going to, that may be soon, too. When you, I think we're sooner. I think you're sooner. <laughs> when, when you heard that they were going to do this, and we've heard that they were going to do this for a long time, but nobody knew when, mm -hmm. what did you think? Did you think, oh my, this, these guys could kill me? Um, I think that what we do is quite different from what a watch is. Right, that's sort of we, we think of the wearables market sort of breaking out into kind of three big buckets. Because you right? don't think they're going to put all this technology in the watch? Well, they haven't. Are we sure? Do, you, do we know that? I'm pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, we so uh, the space is kind of breaking out into fitness devices, which are about kind of workout and you use it a few times a week. Then it's smart watches, which are really a daytime device, right? Very few people I know wear these things to bed, and it's about the same size battery life, it just you won't be able to Because you think it. that the Apple Watch, you will have to charge when you go to sleep at night? No doubt. Absolutely you will, right? Anytime you have that kind of a screen and that kind of functionality on a device, you're not going to make it through a day, right? So you'll charge it at night. There, and then if you do charge at night, you lose a third of your life. And that context for us is really important. And so we think of ourselves as being in the space of kind of 24-7 lifestyle trackers. Ultimately, we want them to get smaller and smaller and smaller and disappear, maybe even be in things like this, right? Where it just sort of completely disappears, lasts forever. How far away from that? Um, that's a function of battery power and, and chips, and, and unfortunately batteries don't follow Moore's law, right? In the same way. Is that so, your biggest hurdle? Absolutely. We're 100% constrained by, by um Of the weight or power. whatever's in here, how much of that is actually the battery? Of the size, it's probably um, the order 20%. So it's a huge amount of the space that gets right. taken up there. Um, but we have, you know, we've got five years of sensor roadmap. We have the definitive intellectual property in the space around how you put all these multi-sensors together. So we feel pretty confident from a technology perspective. We're ahead, and I think the right. reception to up three when we announced it and when we started Do you think people, people want a screen? You don't have a screen on yours. Yours is, yours we is have like, like a, a, piece a of sort fashion. of very simple display that kind of indicates where you are on on a few things, but it's not right. a screen like a watch screen. What about the privacy issues that relate to all these things? You have amazing amounts of data, I imagine, sure. on my sleep. Sure. And when I went running or walking or how many steps I've taken, what do you do with all of that? Well, the first thing we do is we try to put it, we have this thing, as you know, in the application called smart coaching, where we take all that data and we help you unpack how the correlations work. So if you work out at four o'clock, you get this kind of sleep, or 
you know, if you haven't slept well, you're going to create this kind of food. And we try to sort of be this intelligent right. assistant that, that's helping you make smarter decisions. Or if you didn't go to bed early, we try to help you go to bed early and sort of giving you kind of all these, these hygienes and insights based on all that data. And our, we have a pretty big infrastructure that is processing all of that data in real time and trying to make it contextually relevant at the right moment in time. Um, so you asked me about privacy. I mean, look, we have a very simple view of data, which is your data is your data. And you get to decide what you want to do with it, where you want it to go. If we do things with it, we are very explicit about what we do. So you know, in the, in the setup process, we explain what we do with smart coaching. And it's, it's your right. stuff. We don't share any of that. We oh. don't sell it for ads or anything right. like that. Um, and then if we want to connect you to applications, we have about 2,500 developers who've built 2,500 full-blown apps on the platform. And so we ask you, and we tell you what they're going to do with it, and, right. and you get to choose. I don't know if I ever tell you this story. And for those who are, are, don't use Jawbone uh, and don't know about this, you can share your information with friends right. as, and, and create these teams where you are competing with each other. Right. I did that initially. And initially, you Because, actually, I, I won't say who. People here would know who he's actually been on this stage, not today, but in a previous conference. He became one, and he asked if he could, he friended me uh -huh. on the. On the app. On the app. And then I would get these emails from him saying, you don't seem to be sleeping very well. <laughs> or, you know, are you going to the office? Because you look like you must have gone running or something in the middle of the day. And I thought, this is awful. I can't tell all these people. I don't want everyone seeing what I'm doing every single second. I had that similar experience with a couple guys on my board and, uh, and some of our shareholders, right, sort of friending me in the system and saying, are you not sleeping enough and what are you doing here? And yeah, that's, but it's interesting. I mean, the social, um, the social graph on, on up is fascinating. I mean, we've seen that people who have at least one friend in the system move 10 miles more a month than people who don't. So there is some kind of dynamic where, whether it's competition or encouragement, people, when they're doing it together, get themselves up. So it's a good thing for, right. for, for sort of all that stuff. But it does open up right. these, these uh, look, look out, private moments in your life. Look out down the way, though, um, mm -hmm. uh, around what this all looks like in the future. Because I've heard from people who say it is very possible that an employer, the New York Times, uh, whomever, could say, hey, uh, if you wear this up band and we can track you, We'll take fifty dollars a month off of your insurance. Right. Is that going to happen? It's and happening. It's happening. I mean, it's happening. I mean, we're in trials um, on a bunch of that stuff. It's all opt-in. So you know, the way we've set up our, we we actually just launched this week. It's a very timely question. We launched up for groups, which is essentially kind of a group wellness portal where you know whether it's your your manager or your HR person or whoever it is can kind of look at aggregate data and see how people are performing and competing. But what happens if and they do all this stuff? But I mean, it's all opt-in. Users don't have to do it, um, and you can. But is it going to be like data. getting the tobacco-free rate on your insurance, which is if you wear the band? Is it just wearing it alone, or if they actually see that? By the way, you don't seem to move, and you only sleep four hours. Right. And right. then and then it's, and then they're going to up your insurance, not uh, 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 up your premiums, not. Well, insurance in the U. I mean, look, half the Fortune 500 is self self insured, so I think there's that kind of bucket of what what employers can do there relative to you know incentives and, and driving behavior change based on economic incentives. You know, at, at a broader level, you can't do that in the U.S. It's just too regulated around health insurance. You can in other markets. Um, but there is an argument that with more data, you can be much smarter on any insurance product with the actuarial models, right? Those are sort of models that were built in the 40s and 50s. And all of a sudden, right. we have a explosion of data that makes you a lot smarter. So I think it's about delivering a more efficient product right. and encouraging people to do What's been the, the greatest more. surprise or greatest insight now that you've had, you, I mean, this is this is a true big data project, right? So you have all it's the this biggest. data. I mean, people don't realize how many people scale. are wearing these bands now. Millions. And so you're many, getting many millions. Many millions, yeah. and you're getting that information daily. Daily. I mean, we have 300 millennia of human sleep data. So, but what's is it's there, the world's largest sleep study ever conducted? It, Trillions of steps and. And so, what what is the what is the great lesson? My God, I mean, the we, great health we, lesson. Have you changed any of your own behaviors as a result? Trying of this? to, trying to. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, there's so many things that we've gleaned. I mean, it takes someone usually an, a day per time zone change to recover from jet lag. We've seen in our system that women sleep 20 minutes more on average than men across all ages, right? We saw the earthquake in Napa Valley 
almost before the US Geological Service. And the director actually sent us an email saying, how do we team up on these things? Because we saw people waking up. And we saw what, we figured out where the epicenter was based on their wake and sleep pattern, then distance from, from the epicenter and how they went back to sleep. We saw what the effects were on disruption after um, and how long it took them to recover back to normal sleep patterns. So, I mean, there's so much fascinating behavior. We see during di different geopolitical events what happens to people's sleep patterns. Right. When the Miami Heat won the championship a few years ago, that city, you know, didn't sleep. for Like, it, it went to bed three hours later, typically, right? right. We, we had a really funny one. There was, I think it was, we were looking at, it popped up in the system that Bloomington, Indiana got less sleep as a city than Las Vegas. And we were sort of wondering why, and that's the University of Indiana, right? And so clearly, that's the party school, right? right? And so it's interesting. I mean, it, there's so much information. And it, what we're trying to do is be very focused for users on what's valuable and what's going to help them you know, lead better do lives. Do you see this business expand? I mean, right now it's a band. And mm -hmm. I, you have a, a one that's, that can be almost like a pendant, or you can just right. put it on your belt or whatever. Right. But I mean, do you see this? We have this one now. Do you, have, do you think of, I, mean, I don't know what you think of Google Glass. That would be considered a wearable. There's a company in the UK now that's doing a, a sports T-shirt. And in, built into the T-shirt is somehow uh, sensors. Yeah. Sensors. Yeah. Is, where, where does this go? Are we all going to be wearing 100 sensors? Yes, I absolutely think so. And I think, look, different sensors give you different information. There's different things you get on the wrist versus the upper arm versus your ears, versus your eyes, versus what you wear. And so all of it's complementary. And we've built this system that takes all these inputs in. Some of our own hardware, we're working with third-party devices, right? We're preloaded now. And how much now. of your business have to be a hardware business? Or can it, do you think it ultimately becomes a service-oriented business? It is a service. I mean, we think of up as a system. It's one part, you know, the hardware here, the algorithms. We use the phone as a sensor. We use the cloud and, the, and then the, the third-party applications as inputs, too. But we also have third-party hardware that plugs in. I think um, there's a variety of watches, smart watches right. that have announced that, that up is the software this on there. We'll be on the iWatch. Right? You'll be on the iWatch we'll, as we'll a piece the, of software. We'll have the up service as you know it on running on the iWatch, plugging into our cloud and, and, and sort of running that health. On a relative part. basis between health, which it seems directionally where the company's going, mm -hmm. versus how I knew you, knew you first from, from the Bluetooth right, uh, right. earpiece or the, the jam boxes. How's the business split right now? It has organically become the bulk of our business by far, right? It's just because it's gone so fast and so furious. I mean, we can't keep up with demand. We can't scale fast enough, right? We can't build enough of them. Uh, you're one of our few Valley people here today. So let me just ask you, uh, I, think, I think there was a report that you, you had a $3 billion valuation. Last week, Uber got a $40 billion. What do you think is going on in the Valley right now? I think there's a lot of great innovation. <laughs> but d does it make sense? <laughs> what do you expect me to say? No, no. Uh, what, do you think the I mean, there's awesome stuff going on, right? Do you think the valuations make sense? I think companies are worth whatever anybody's willing to pay for them. I, 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 I mean, let, you let me, guys here are better at valuing companies than we are. Um, and clearly, people are buying into these things. I think the difference, I mean, we've been around for a while. I think the difference between 99 and then the, you know, the other bubble in the, in, in the middle of the last decade, these are real companies with real customers that are paying them. The unit economics work. They're scaling faster than anyone's ever seen before. The innovation's incredible. So I think it is a very different thing. And, and look, frankly, you know, I think that Silicon Valley is driving innovation globally, right? And it is the heart and soul of innovation in, in the world, right? And so we, we are sort of spreading that. Um, to the rest of the world. So it's exciting. Um, did the valuation make sense? I don't know. You tell me. Um, you're better at that than we are. But again, at the end of the day, it's what people are willing to pay. And it's driving real companies with, with real growth and real customers. Hussein, thank you for being here. Uh, it was thank a you. pleasure and a... Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, maybe we'll be friends on, on the job. <laughs> thing. Just I won't criticize your... Don't, your... don't share too much information. Good thank to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you.